faithful servant to Christ, if you're there, come on in. I'll put the link in the chat or I'll send it by email. I've already sent it by email anyway. Anybody else listening, you'll have to excuse the background noise. I usually, as I usually say, there's nothing I can do about that. Just been watching a, a video that I put together this morning. Apologies for the audio, I meant to, I should have lowered the volume on it so you could hear what was being said. I've done it again, I'll probably upload it again. No hassle. Um, you see, what do you do with those confessions? At 1 Corinthians 12, 1 John 4. There's another one, I can't remember the other one. See, Brian Harlow, I don't know if you heard, at the end of that video, and he's still got it on his channel, I've downloaded it. I, I could upload it now if I wanted to. Uh, hello, John, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, I was just saying about Brian Harlow, he said, I can't remember his precise words, I should have, uh, he said he doesn't believe that unbelievers would have a problem making those confessions, and unbelievers are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they can't be. Well, um, didn't uh, Aaron Deering's dad is like an alcoholic or whatever didn't he make that confession Aaron Deering yeah I heard uh, him. I have the I have the video of his so-called apology where he said his dad is lost and his dad was able to say Jesus Christ is the Lord or something no oh. I don't know what went on there You see, what do you do with those verses? No man can confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We're still... That's true. We're Go ahead. We're st I won't say stuck, but we still have those verses to deal with. Exactly, and, yeah. And similar confession is made concerning Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Yeah. And that's 1 Corinthians 12. Yeah, I think uh, it's 1 Corinthians 12, 3. I think it is. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I know. I remember seeing one of Aaron's videos. He tried to say that the full Antichrist test is basically the entire chapter of 1 John chapter 4. And he goes on to say, you know, you know, he that loveth God. Uh, or he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And he goes on there and saying that a person has to basically love God and love their brother, or else, you know, he can't, like that, that was his argument that the full Antichrist challenge is the, the entire chapter where basically you have to love your brother and to basically prove your safety. That was his argument. Um, I didn't listen to him doing any so called teaching on that. I wouldn't want to take that uh, confession out of context. Yeah. I do love my brothers. Uh, I just wouldn't want to spend any more time than I've already done. Yeah. Talking. Especially with a with a backstabber like Aaron. You know, again, I don't believe he's a brother. I think he's lost. But you know, even if he was a brother, I I wouldn't want anything to do with him. I couldn't. Um. Okay, 
if he if he's made that confession, I think I believe that he did when he came into those live streams. I yeah. sneaked in, of course. But what they're doing with those verses, accountable KJV say those that those confessions can be faked. I don't believe so. Yeah. Okay, let's assume I, that, that, that. Saved. What what sort of way is yeah. that to treat each other? I mean, I know I've misbehaved. Uh, it's not an excuse. I was angry. Uh, being accused of that, because I know what it means to be acu falsely accused of being a Jesuit. Yeah. Because it's lining me up with all I, sorts of other stuff that the Jesuits are covering up for. Exactly, yeah. I mean, Aaron, he just throws around that accusation so lightly. I mean... And that was an issue I had with the Brian cult for a while is that they just label anyone who goes against them as Roman Catholics without like giving any credible proof to back it up. It's just all their speculation. But see, what, what happens when you keep calling people that? Look what Brian well, did. Yeah, I, it's mind control. It's mind control. Like basically, you basically expose the Jesuits and how they control everything. And then you start naming people as Jesuits as like a mind control tactic. Because, you know, by calling me a Jesuit now, Everyone's saying, you know, Aaron's making it seem like I'm a Jesuit when really he has no proof to back that up. And now people are going to say, don't listen to him. He's a Jesuit, you know, yeah. with no proof to back it up whatsoever. It's another type of propaganda as well, John, that. Yeah. The putting out there, that this, that, and the other person's a Jesuit. Any other King James Bible believing Christians would think, oh, all the Jesuits are infiltrating this group. Oh. Or they must be doing something right, blah blah, and they're not. Yeah, not at all. I mean, it, it's like back when I was into the whole you know, <coughs> white supremacy thing. Like back when I was a lost person, I was into the white supremacy thing, and yeah. I, with the whole white supremacist movement, they basically will label anyone who disagrees with them as be, of being a Jew. And you see Aaron doing the same oh, thing. Right, if yeah. you disagree with him, you're, you do. If you disagree with him, you're a Jesuit. So they have the same kind of mentality. If as if if you're not with us, then you're one of the enemies, basically. Yeah. I've got no beef with, with Brian Harlow. I've listened to his video. I've got a perf I've got a prop I mean you'd never get a proper transcript off. So I watched his video twice to make sure I got it uh, exactly word for word. But in one breath he says, Yeah, Christians can easily make that confession. You know, Jesus Christ is coming the flesh. Yeah. And but how can he say because that verse says, no man can confess that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh but by the Holy Ghost. Or is it Holy Spirit? Exactly. That, you know what I mean? Same thing. Yes. It's, yeah, and the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Same thing. An unregenerate person, somebody who's not saved, is a child of the devil. How can they possibly make that confession? I don't know what went on with Aaron's father. I wouldn't want to be a judge of it. Uh, accountable KJV told me he was crying about it or something. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I really don't know, John. I mean, and, and then you know he comes out and says, "I'm no." He says, "He says I'm no longer fit to be in ministry." But then a month later, he comes back saying he's in ministry. So, total hypocrite. Well, somebody who's in ministry, John, wouldn't have any doubts about it. And if they made a mistake, you know what they'd do? They'd make another video and they'd correct the error and they'd say, look, oh, I got this bit wrong or whatever, and put it right. Fair enough. Done with, repented of, uh, you know, taking the Lord in prayer. It's done with. Does Brian ever do that? No, he just doubles down on it. And again, yeah. I would say, and with, John, the, with the Antichrist thing, with the Antichrist thing, Brian, he, he deleted the video, but he never came out and repented of it. He just deleted the video, and that was it, basically. Yeah. And then Brian Harlow. I mean, I've read the transcript to it, John. Obviously, I have. It's only about two and a half pages. It's full of fallacious reasoning. If you listen to it, see, what you, there's a big difference, John. I don't know if you've noticed or sort of there's a big difference between listening to video and then getting a tran a proper word for word transcript of that video and then reading through it. 
you see the mistakes and whatever the yeah. reasoning better mm -hmm. so that's what and, i did and, what, yeah that's what i did with his video and he's using with oh it's absurd oh it's ridiculous and a few other repeated phrases that he keeps using and basically what he's saying is if you disagree with me you're ridiculous you're absurd no truth yeah, that's what it I comes mean, down to yeah that's what it comes down to basically with this whole denlinger cult i mean i i, I like brian I, i've got not absolutely no hate towards him at all but i mean in the last month john i mean he's doubled down on some really quite bad stuff i mean he's coming out with that uh, people forget the cruelty of god which is nowhere in scripture god is rebuking cruelty of people yeah cruelty. and then the and i want to keep going on about this but it does highlight a point what he says about those people in the nifb uh, it's just totally wrong it's just totally wrong yeah exactly it was wicked what he said totally wicked but people aren't getting on it they're all amen in it john they're all giving it amen yeah yeah crazy i mean it, it's crazy how they just you know just amen everything the guy says it, it just shows he's running a cult because they, they, they will not they will not question anything the guy says and when someone does question it Oh, you're a Jesuit, you're a heretic, you're this, you're that, you know. Yeah. But you see, it's the application of that verse. You don't go up to a co complete stranger and say, can you read this? Well, the chances are they will read it and they'll be able to read it. But that's not the same as a confession. Actually believe in that. Yeah. Jesus is coming in the flesh. That G and believing and knowing that Jesus is the Lord, He exactly, is God. Yeah. You know? and, mm -hmm. and in normal conversation with Christians, when I was at a certain jail in Nottingham on Perry Road, you know, I'd be, I'd be having fellowship it, uh, fellowship with other inmates in a cell. Two or three of them were lifers. I mean, there must have been about fifty or sixty years jail between us, John. And there was a short term and we'd have a conversation and we'd be discussing scripture we'd sing some songs out of mission praise uh and in conversation i'd say oh you know somebody might bring up something that they had a problem with and they prayed about it and they dealt with it sort of you know and i would say oh jesus is the lord or oh, jesus christ is the lord you know i'd say something like that and they would sometimes say that back to me not every time but you know how how would you say that you would apply that verse john you know well yeah i mean i would say that obviously a safe person should be able to confess it you know yeah and, and somebody who's lost because it says you know no man can say it by the holy ghost paraphrasing of course but you know yeah. only somebody with the holy ghost can say it yeah, that's what scripture says. That's what the Holy Spirit gave Paul to say. Yeah. To write. That's what he wrote. He was, you know, as he was moved by the Holy Spirit. It's the inspired mm -hmm. word of God. I know, you do, I know you know that, John. I'm not trying to, I'm not being patronizing. But, but, mm. uh, but yeah, for somebody, I mean, it's up to him what he says. I, it's not my problem, but somebody to turn around and say, Oh, it can be faked what exactly is he saying about god's word the holy spirit says one thing he says something completely contrary to it what i'm supposed to think yeah exactly crazy yeah and why would brian hide that video I do exactly, disagree. Yeah. I've got that video anyway. I found it. 
I don't know how I found it. I thought it was some sort of miracle, really. It just sort of cropped up in my search thingy on YouTube. Mm. Uh, and it's yeah, like that, crazy. it's like divisive inherentity. Um, you know, I've I got a basic amount of respect for the fact that he went and had a conversation with King's Table. He stated that he believed King's Table to be a saved man, as with Jason Singling. Then he hides a video. Did anybody call him out as being a Jesuit for talking to King's Table? Yeah, no, nobody did. It just shows they're being a respecter of persons, too. But why would they cut? Why would. Because I've given nobody any reason to believe that I'm a Jesuit. It doesn't make sense. Exactly. Neither am I. I mean, I've done many videos against the Jesuits and exposing them. So if, if I'm a Jesuit, I'm, a, I'm pretty bad at it. I've been doing that since, well, when I got out, really, when I when I sort of sussed out how YouTube works. Because you used to be able to do, on YouTube, you could make a video. They had a different setup for doing it on YouTube. But once I got used to that, and I've been do, I've been tweeting... I've done thousands and thousands of tweets, John. I was showing 982 all the tweets I've been doing on Catholicism for the exactly. last eight or nine years. I mean, you've been, exposing, you've been exposing Catholicism longer than Aaron even thinks he's been saved. Yeah, well, I have. Uh, and if he was to tell the truth, which is a little bit unlikely, even accountable KJV would admit that. I've been trying to expose the Jesuits, the child abuse within the Catholic so-called church, the other stuff. Uh, Trump, I mean, I was yeah. going, once I found out he was running for president, I googled his name, I found out he'd been to Jesuit University for two years, and he went to some other university. His family are Jesuit yeah. connected. He's mafia connected, he's got to be. He, you can't build a building in New York without getting some, you know, a large building in New York without the mafia being involved. Yeah, you know, you exactly. Pay a few here and there, something like that. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but totally. That would exactly. I mean, there's, there's connections there, obviously. Yeah. And the judicial system over there. I've, I've done thousands of tweets on that Jesuit I mentioned to you who who got abortion legalized. That Jesuit exactly, is yeah. going over there. Robert Drine. Loads of stuff. And it's kind of funny because okay. most of what you cover on the Jesuits, Aaron hasn't even touched on. So it's funny. No. In fact, I haven't seen any videos Aaron's done exposing Jesuits ex ex except for that one video he made called the Jesuits are no laughing matter. He's done no other videos addressing, uh, directly addressing the Jesuits. He'll mention them in, in other videos, but like I've done more videos, way more videos address like directly addressing the Jesuits. You know, Aaron's only done like one or two of them. He was a Jesuit. He's probably more of a Jesuit than we are. He did that video on the Jesuits, so called, riding on the back of Brian doing something on them. Yeah, well, so it, 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 really, it really shows it really shows it shows who's, who really shows who's emulating who. You know, he called he said he said I was emulating Brian. It's he's he's really the one who's emulating him. Yeah. Uh, what other video? Oh yeah, I mean the way he talks about Ed Fenninger. I know that you disagree with Ed Fenninger quite strongly on some things, John. Yeah, there are some big that, issues I disagree with him on, but you know. Is that any way to talk about Ed Fenninger? Like he's, you know, he's shouting and you know, getting really angry. I think that who was Brian or who Brian or Aaron? Brian. Oh yeah, yeah. Or like Brian threatened. It's kind of funny. I mean, Brian, he just can't handle being rebuked. He can't handle being exposed. So you have to come out and say he's going to like sue Fenninger for harassment or something like that. You know, I mean, making videos about somebody's not harassing him. Harassment would be you saying the messages, you you stalking him. That's harassment. Harassment is not having videos made about you. You know, that's not harassment. You know. Yeah. Um, and plus, another thing, another thing too is that Brian Dillinger he puts his videos out in public. I mean, he's he's basically in full time a full time YouTuber. 
you know, he puts everything on public. So yeah, you can't get mad when people make videos about you when you put everything on public like that. Yeah. I've got the video here. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the, uh, him going off on Ed Benninger, but there's no way to, oh, wow. there's no reason to speak about him like that. Well, you have, you actually have the full video of him just yelling at him. Basically. Well, I don't know if it's the full Wait, video. Could you send me it? Oh. Yes, I do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Please I want to see it. Because it, it really just showed Brian's... Tr like, how, how, I just, how he just can't handle being exposed. Let me see if I can share a screen and show you. All right. Yeah. Uh, Oh, it won't work like that. Oh, view it on YouTube. Right, screen share. Give me a second. All right. It'll be buffering in a minute because my laptop's not that good, so. Hmm. Well, I also did a video um, called Jehovah's Creation, where the thumbnail was me burning a Jesuit symbol. So, you know, yeah. so I'm pretty bad at being a Jesuit if I'm, if I'm doing that. Video that Binlinger put out, and I'm just wondering, does this guy have high blood that? pressure? You know, is he oh, is is. going to the doctor? No, it's bluffering a bit, but oh well. Getting checked out and all that stuff. His blood pressure is probably skyrocket out of control. You watch this video, it's it's like he's about ready to have a stroke. Just watch this. You better wake up. You better wake up and see what this is getting you people into. You just are being reported, Fenninger, for real. He's yelling so loud, it's like distorting the mic. Get shut down because it deserves to be shut down. You mentally ill, sick nut. Yeah, and the way he spoke about that guy's a feeling. father. Yeah, I feel bad for his yeah. child. It's unbelievable. Yeah. He has no self control. Is that a Christian? Someone who doesn't have self control? Let me tell you something. He's going to lead you right to hell along with him. He preaches a false gospel. I mean, are, are when he says he's not a Christian, it makes me think of that trading spouses with that woman, the God warrior. She's not a Christian! <laughs> and my family. You better wake up. You better wake up. So I guess that somebody's impersonating Brian Denlinger, and that person that left the comment on my video was the impersonator. I kind of thought it looked a little bit off because there's like a space between the, the Husky and the XP. Oh, that's funny though. I think it's funny. I don't want to keep this brief and to the point. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of this. Um, He's just so uh, angry. Well, Brian, you can get checked out because you're going to stroke out soon, bud, if you keep having tax like this. Anyways, get on some... Uh, Good blood pressure medicine. Get that. Yeah. Wow, that was insane. <laughs> it, was, it was distorting his mic. Yeah. Yeah. Ed Fenninger, Ed Fenninger has obviously triggered him. Yeah. I mean, Brian. Brian just can't. Brian just can't handle it. Brian just can't not handle being rebuked and exposed. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got the one where uh, the Brian's uh, video on the. Uh, I don't like the description test, but the spiritual test video. I've got that. I can send that to you as well if you want, John. I don't know if you. Sure. To get it. Because so far, so far he hasn't. So far he hasn't come out and repented of it. So, in my in my in my standard, he still believes that way. If he hasn't come out and publicly repented of it. Well, I've got a screen screen capture of. Brian commenting to Jacob um, Jacob Thompson about the the spiritual test. Mm. I'll send you that as well. Okay. Yeah. Oh. 
See, it's in it's in there, John. That test, that that not test, that compression. Three times in three places. What's the other one? There's one, one John four, one Corinthians twelve. Uh, what's the other one, John? Um, I think it's uh Second John. Oh, it says First Corinthians uh twelve three. Uh, 1 John 4, 1 through 3, 1 John 4, 15, and 2 John 1, 7. I believe that's where they are. Right. But here, here's a screenshot. I Here's a screenshot I took from a comment. I, I believe Tim covered this comment as well, where this person was talking about you know, listening to rock music or whatever. And then Brian says, if you claim to enjoy music which exalts the flesh and has origins in Satanism, then you have never been born again. And I, you know, I posted this on Facebook saying this is proof that Brian Dunlinger is a lord because he's, yeah. he's judging people's salvation based on sins of the flesh, which is what lordship salvation is. So okay. I, I, I put, put it on Facebook saying proof that Brian's a lordship salvationist. I don't deny that there's all sorts of stuff going on in this rock music, back masking and all that sort of thing. But if somebody's saved and they, 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 they've got, they're, they're listening to that music, I wouldn't say it's the best thing in the world to be doing it. In fact, obviously, I'll discourage them from it. But how does rock music change someone's state with regards to salvation? How do you lose your salvation just because you listen to some rock music? Rock music? Exactly, yeah. I also wrote this, um, I'll just... Uh... One sec. How do I? There we go. I also wrote this blog post as well on my uh, website, um, basically exposing Brian Dunlinger and his cult that he runs. And I, I just go through some stuff there and show that Brian Dunlinger is a cultist, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I call it. You know, I say that Aaron Deering's a little wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, that's true. I mean. You know, Brian, I do believe he is saved, uh, but Aaron Deering, I have no doubt that that guy is lost. Well, I'd like to believe he's saved. It's not like... I mean, I don't hate the guy. I wouldn't want him to be lost. Obviously not. I mean, when the KJV introduced me to him, as it were, online, I didn't know anything about him. I wasn't, you know, I had a certain amount of trust, I suppose, in the Cartwell KJV. But I think even even Brad got on to the fact that I wasn't totally convinced, and I haven't been fully convinced of Aaron Deering at all. Not once. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've, I mentioned that before, but, you know, I, I had been suspicious of him for quite a while. Um like, you know, I, I never really got a good feeling. Like, I'd listen to the other people, like, you know, Divisive and Narratist and those other guys. And, you know, I, I'd, hey, you know, great video. But whenever I listen to Aaron, I'd always get, like, a really, really bad spiritual feeling. And um, yeah. I believe it's because we don't have the same – I believe it's because he doesn't have the same spirit I do. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit. What nailed it for me, John, in one live stream, I think you were in it. I don't know if you remember. He was saying that certain people – it's impossible for them to get saved. He Basically Calvinism. Yeah, which is why I call him an ex-Catholic, limited atonement, boffin. But um, nobody, if they've got a pulse and they can think in a reasonable sort of manner, nobody's outside of the possibility of salvation. Exactly, yeah. I don't think so. I mean, you could argue that some so-called high-level Satanists. Uh, but even then, God can God can wake those people up. The Holy Spirit can convict somebody of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Yeah. <sighs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I believe you know when Brian said you know Jesuits can't get saved. Yeah, that's that's heresy because anyone can get saved. I mean, it's it's up to their it's their choice if they want to get saved or not. That's what it comes down to. Well, Alberto Rivera, um, I don't know if you've seen those 
I mean, I don't believe everything that Kit Kat put out, but I think Alberto Rivera, I think he was interviewed by Eric John Phelps. I'm not sure. Um, isn't yeah. wasn't Alberto Rivera? Wasn't he the ex Jesuit that now that like came out against the Jesuits or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He exposed them in a lot of ways. Jason yeah. Wheeler. Yeah, yep. Jason was in that stream with um, Matthew Landau. I don't know anything. I mean, I caught the last four or five minutes of that stream with King's Table and Matthew Landau and Jason. So I don't know what went in, went on in there. Yeah, anyone can get saved, absolutely, Jason. Exactly. I don't like the way Brian spoke about Jason and the way that uh, I'm not having a, I mean, I know I like Tim, but when I saw that video of Tim mimicking Jason, I didn't like that at all. Yeah. So that's, pretty, that's not a pretty sight. That's not the way. That's well, how you look somebody again is, is judging according to appearance and you know a violation of 24 so they say oh don't judge me according to my appearance but then they do the same thing to us basically yeah you, you're not allowed to wear short sleeve t-shirts even if it's uh, really hot out <laughs> yeah hot you can't breathe yeah so hot that because i don't want to be just dripping with sweat in my video so but yeah. apparently i can't wear a short sleeve shirt you know ridiculous it's it just shows Aaron. Thing. He was just Aaron was just nitpicking, trying to find like little things he can against me, so he can make he can make a good video, basically. Well, I don't know what else he said about you. Uh, I actually didn't listen to the whole video. I watched three or four minutes, and that was it. I've downloaded them. Uh, that was before that you you came on that live stream the other week last week. Yeah. When I did that stream, I I, I, I actually uh oh sorry, go ahead. I did that stream that Sunday and you came in. Yeah. Which I'm grateful for, by the way. I I actually um downloaded Aaron's, you know, Aaron's um, you know, public rebuke of of uh what was it? Uh, Brian Harlow and, and Tim Conan. I have it downloaded because so far Aaron's repented of the Brian Harlow part, but he hasn't repented of the uh of him lying about Tim Conan. So I, I oh. still have that video downloaded as well as his little fake apology video he did. Um, I have that downloaded before. I downloaded it before he deleted his channel. Um, so, so I mean, and, and so far, you know, I use I use that in my video because, you know, he says he says he's no longer fit for ministry, but then he comes back because he disqualified himself, but then he comes back thinking he's qualified again. So I use that to show his hypocrisy because he hasn't he hasn't like you know came out and renounced the video or anything. So, where's all this crying and stuff that you've got to do and rending your heart? To get saved, it's not, exactly, like yeah. it's not like you got to beg God to save you. He wants to save you. I he mean, wants, he doesn't want anybody. Exactly. To you. Hell wasn't created for. <coughs> well, I don't like the expression human being. Uh, hell wasn't created. What? Yeah, for exactly. Him. I mean, when it, when Aaron said that you had to be that, you know, he said like he said in in his video, you know, quote unquote rebuking you. He said that, um, you know, it was a quote unquote rebuke. He was just, you know, lying again, again and everything. But he said, you know, he said, he's like, you know, put it this way. If you weren't weeping and bawling your eyes out, asking the, asking the Lord to forgive you, you've not been saved. And I'm, I, when I heard that, I'm just like, wow, that's a total heresy because uh, Acts 18, 7 to 8, the uh, chief ruler of the synagogue, he wasn't weeping and crying when he got saved. Uh, Acts 8, 35 to 39, the Ethiopian eunuch, he wasn't weeping and crying when he got saved. Uh, John 4, 7 to 45, the woman at the well was not weeping and crying, but she got saved. And Acts 16, 25 to 40, the, the flipping jailer, he was not weeping and crying. He was trembling, but he was not weeping and crying. And he got saved. So four different examples of people who got saved and they were not weeping and crying. Yeah. And Apostle Paul, same. Yeah. Uh, what about those people at Pentecost that day? There must be yeah. a thousand there. I mean, if they were all weeping and crying, it would have recorded that, you know, they all weeped and cried. It, it didn't mention anything about them weeping and crying. Yeah. Oh. 
What's that other video that? I've seen? And, and you know, like, like Brian, they say basically that oh, your life ha you have to like your life has to be wrecked, and you know you have to just be broken. Well, there are examples in the Bible of people whose whose their life was going just fine, and they got saved anyway. So. I mean, by, by saying that this stuff has to happen before you get saved, in my opinion, it's nothing more than backloading works because it's saying that God will not, not save you unless this happens first. So it, it's, it works, essentially. Yeah. As I said earlier to, to, to people, we can't bring anything to Jesus Christ. Yeah. We bring our own sins. He takes them upon him, upon himself. You know, we can't yeah. even without the Holy Spirit. We can't acknowledge exactly. sin. It is, i.e. sin without the Holy Spirit. Yep. The yeah, Jason God. Jason said Jason's in the comments. Jason said, Yeah, anyone can get saved. Exactly. You know, yeah. true. So oh, I don't know. I don't know what leaders are being like that, John. I don't understand. Honestly, do not understand it. Can you think of anything I said or did that would cause somebody? And I know it was seven or eight months ago. To call me a Jesuit. I mean, that guy, I've had hundreds of hours conversation with him and he kicked me in the teeth like that. What for? Well, he did the same thing to me, too. He's a backstabber. The Cannibal KJV, you mean? Oh, oh, I mean, I, I was talking... I thought you were referring, referring to Aaron. No. No. I don't want to mention his name again on, the, on my channel. I don't blame you. Yeah. But I, I don't understand why... I mean, he didn't mention my name, but they all got on it. They knew who they were. Having a poor cat, all backbiting me. The cat with KJV falsely accusing me of being a Jesuit. I mean, it's so stupid. Exactly. I mean, again, they just throw around that term Jesuit just, just, just with no basis whatsoever. Yeah. Well, they must have had a reason because there was no. I, do, I couldn't have cared less what Aaron says. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mostly, I'm not going to do too many videos exposing Aaron because you know that that kid needs to get saved. He's, he's you know, he's lost, um, and, and and he has he has received many admonitions that just won't pay. If he wants to, you know, he needs to get saved. I, you know, if he got saved, I'd I'd rejoice, but. You know, I'm not going to waste my time, you know, making too many videos on him. I mean, he doesn't lie about me. I'll just, I'll obviously defend myself. But yeah. that kid needs to get saved. He's lost, obviously. You don't want to let him crawl about in your head, John. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know... I mean, I mean, I might do more stuff on Brian because Brian, in my opinion, is like a lot more dangerous because he has many more subscribers and. Uh, and, and Brian just has like this cultic, just totally cultic following. So I might, I'd focus more like exposing Brian because obviously, obviously Aaron is obviously being influenced by Brian. I mean, Aaron's getting this from Brian, this kind of mentality from Brian. Yeah. So best, best to go after the source instead of the symptoms. Yeah, Brian. I think I know where he sort of went wrong and he started getting annoyed and just, once he started making mistakes and stuff, it just uh, snowballed. I think it was a mistake bringing his wife on, John. Who, Brian? Yeah. You, you, yeah, I've, I've heard people say that his wife, like, maybe influences or maybe has, like, control over him or something. I've heard people say that. Yeah. But, like, like, someone would say that bringing his wife on is, like, you know, not good because, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, his wife is obviously very smart. She knows she knows a lot of stuff, but I think she can kind of behave like a Jezebel at times. Just you know, just my thoughts. Any of it. Every time she comes on, I don't. I've, I've never liked it. 
just doesn't ring true. It just doesn't. Uh... No. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, my belief on like women being in ministry is I, I believe that women should not be in ministry alone. That, that's always been my belief. They shouldn't be like in, in ministry alone. Um, just like why I say young kids should not be in ministry. They should, you know, that, that kind of thing. So, you know, yeah. but to Brian's, to Brian's credit, his wife is not in it alone. But, you know, I I, I just think that, you know, there there should be, uh, I'm trying to think of the proper words, but, um, because, you know, I, I don't want to, like, I don't want to come on like attack his wife or anything, but, you know, I, I do think that Brian should maybe, you know, just like, just make it clear that, you know, He's the one in charge, basically. Not you know. Well, why can't she just start her own channel and just get the women on there? Yeah. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah, guess... Go ahead. Yeah, we just responded to Jason's comment there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the thing, the thing about the thing about um the whole calling upon God thing is that I, I do believe in Romans ten nine to thirteen, um. But I guess what what the point of contention is is that trusting in the calling instead, the trusting in the act of the calling instead of trusting in Jesus Christ is not basically salvation. Obviously, you should call upon God. I'm not against calling upon God. I still stand by Romans ten thirteen. But putting basically putting calling above faith is, in my opinion, kind of an issue. So. Well, the thing is, I looked up that word, calling upon. I read the whole of Romans, then I read Romans 9, 10, and 11 again. And then I obviously noticed the the thing, call upon the name on the, of the Lord. So I did a search in my Bible app. I can't remember how many verses I came up. I think there's about 12. <coughs> but calling upon the name of the Lord is always in those verses. Uh, where did I put it? always associated with the other aspects of praise like praise worship praying things like that john it's more than just yeah like knocking on and, and, you know and and how brian how, how they interpret it is they interpret it as you being on your knees and just bawling with tears saying god you know just please save me that's not what it is it's just simply saying you know God be our soul to me, a sinner. It's not you on your knees, bawling your eyes out like how they make it out to be. They, they twist what they basically twist what it means to call upon God in Romans ten. Well, John, if you offered me a free gift, right? If I was able to, because obviously I don't live in Canada. If you offered me a free gift, how would you feel if I suddenly fell to my knees and started bawling and crying and rending my heart and? Saying, oh, John, please give me that gift when you was already offering me it. Yeah. It, you know it's, I mean? it's like, you know, here's a gift. It's like, here, take it. You know, take it. You know, like, yeah. here it is. It's free. Take it. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I mean, when you ask somebody for a gift, since when, like, if I was going to go ask my boss for a raise, would I get on knees begging my eyes out saying, please give me a raise, you know, that kind of stuff? I would just say, hey, can I please have a raise? You know, I won't, you know, do what Brian says to do, bawling your eyes out and that kind of stuff. Or, or if he offered you the raise, yeah, and you got your begging, he'd probably fire you. I don't know. <laughs> if I if I like got on my knees and started crying and bawling my eyes out, my boss would be like, "What are you insane?" But what do we take to the cross, John? When you're not saved, when you're unregenerate, on your way to hell, you've really got nothing that God wants in your life. Yeah, there's just nothing about you worth saving. That's the thing. There's nothing about you that, that God would, would, would like find worthwhile saving. That's the thing. Well, there is a soul and the spirit in there that he would want that saved, but yeah. there's nothing that would give us any merit in God's sight. Yeah. Uh, merit or... So we can take nothing to well, do. Well, that, that's why that's why Jesus Christ has has to actually impute his righteous righteousness to you because you know your righteousness is, is nothing. So he has to actually impute his righteousness to your account. That's that's you know that's a fact. And he took our sins upon him. We we 
I couldn't. How 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 would you give your sins to Jesus? I mean, one yeah. of the things obviously that is part of salvation, getting saved, uh, acknowledging that you've sinned, calling it for what it is. It's a sin. It's an offence to God. You know my behaviour. I don't deserve salvation. I mean, when I got saved, I was, well, I'd already taken a person's life, like 12 years previously, so I definitely didn't deserve to go to heaven. But Jesus took all that from me. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 8 to 10, for though I was, I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent, though, it, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, but it were but for a season. Now I rejoice that you were not made that you were made sorry, but that you soared after or that you soared to repentance. For if you were made sorry after a godly man manner, that you might receive the damage by us. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. And verse eleven, for I beheld this same thing that you soared after a godly sort. So yeah. you know, repentance is not you having to do works. Or bawling your eyes out. It's just sorrow for your sins. Yeah. And I'm not saying, I mean, I wouldn't despise somebody saying to me, you know, if I, if I knew they were Christian and whatever, or I was in prayer to God and I was crying, I wouldn't say a thing, John. You know what I mean? I wouldn't. There's no way yeah. I would just. I, wouldn't I mean, I, I wouldn't. I don't discourage that. I just say that that's not necessary for salvation. If someone's not doing that. It doesn't mean they're not saved, basically. No, I mean, just when you're talking to God in prayer, a saved man, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You can have sorrow over the things that you've done or said. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't think I'd ever cry about it. I got over all that crying and stuff. I mean, I didn't even cry when I when I ended up in jail when I got life off. You know, I mean, yeah, crying does you no know, good, John, in jail or anywhere. It doesn't change anything. It's yeah, your, emotion, your emotions. I'll ask the point. Your emotions tell you nothing about God at all. God's word tells exactly, you. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, a lot. Some of these people, I think, especially like the charismatics. Not that I've ever been involved with them. They're into all that emotional stuff, aren't they? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think I've only ever met one charismatic. Uh, a I met. I've met a couple of charismatics. I, I met oh, a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of the Christians I've met, they all use a King James Bible. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Holy Spirit will lead you to use a King James Bible because, you know, I mean, I do believe you can get saved from the modern versions because the modern versions do make you realize you're a sinner. But yeah. eventually the Holy Spirit will get you to the King James Bible eventually. Yeah. If you're searching for truth. And the other thing about sin, the Holy Spirit Assuming that you're a saved man and you're regenerate, obviously, and I know that you know this, um, will convict you of sin, righteousness, and judgment. You don't need some. I mean, I don't, no, don't need something like Brian Denlinger or. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with pointing out somebody, you know, if, if they're in error and all that. So I, I don't need Brian Denlinger to tell me when I've sinned and when I haven't. Never been reliant upon him. Where was he when I was behind my cell door? Yeah. I mean, again, like you've been saved like longer than most of us have even been alive. So. Well, yeah. I mean, that's not something I want to boast of. I mean, I, you. <laughs> I would say things that would. Yeah, I've never used I mean, I have done, you know, I've said I've been saved since before you were, you know, it was I go to or something like that, you know. Um, not that it's proof of anything, John. People do that. Uh, 
Christians do backslide to make mistakes. Of course they do. Yeah, it's the flesh. You know, it's a sinful flesh we all have. The only thing I resent really is being accused of being a part of the Denlinger crew because I don't think I don't believe I ever actually was. I mean, I was talking to members of it. To, well, not exactly members. It's probably the wrong word, but people more closely involved with that. Than yeah. I was ever. Being. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I would hate to be accused of being a, a Denling, right? Because you know, I don't want to be named after a man. You know, I don't want to be. I don't, I'm not. I don't want to be a follower of men. Yeah. Well, you're one of Brian Denlinger's crew, are you? You know, like that. Yeah. Or, or, or like, or you're, you, or it's like, or you're one of those. You must be one of those Denlingerites or those Denlingerite cultists or whatever. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, if somebody asked me about, I've got a list anyway on a like a PDF in my Google Drive. It's all handwritten. If somebody asked me about, oh, where do I get some stuff on pre-trib proofs? Well, I'd send him to Brian Denlinger's playlist on it. I'd go to his channel, type in uh, pre-trib proofs, send him the link. Two minutes. What's the problem? He has done some excellent stuff, John. He's done over over 160 over 160 sermons, you know, proving that the, the uh, rapture is before the time of Jacob's trouble. He's done a lot of good stuff on it. Yeah. I mean, I've I've done some I've done some of my own videos on the uh, pre-trip rapture, but really, the, the like you know, my mine are more kind of just basic stuff. If you want like in-depth stuff on the pre-trip rapture, I I would direct them to Brian's videos. Yeah. Well, I would just go the simple route, me. Um, I just say it doesn't make sense for Jesus to put himself through his own wrath. <laughs> yeah. Put his own body. You know, because that's, that's what that the time of Jacob's trouble, trouble uh, Daniel's 70th week is. Exactly. It, it's, you know, and, and of course, post trip they, they twist it and say, well, the wrath and, and the thing, the time Jacob fell are two separate things. No, they're not. You know, read the book of Revelation. It's God pouring out his wrath on, yeah. on the world. So because they have they have to separate it because, you know, because because if it was the wrath of God, it would it'd make a whole lot of contradictions because God doesn't put righteous people through his wrath. So they have to separate the wrath from the actual event in order to make it work, basically. But he's taken his wrath from us right when we got saved yeah. so i mean it'd be it should be almost like god would be going back on his word wouldn't it yeah and, and you know the bible even says god you know the bible says god hath not appointed us to wrath and the bible says we're delivered from the wrath to come so yeah and once you can get some to understand that the time of jacob's trouble daniel 70th week is the, the time of god's wrath upon the earth on all the unbelievers and the ungodly and you know those that basically call god a liar the rest is relatively simple yeah Obviously, they explain matthew 24 to them a bit but... i i i have a vid i actually have a video on that um called matthew 24 is not about the rapture where i basically compare matthew 24 with the rapture passages and show how, how they don't add up so and i prove they're not talking about the same thing and anyway, Jesus doesn't even hint at this needing to travel to Jerusalem so he can flee into the mountains of Judea, does he? Yeah. I haven't bought a place. It, it, it's like, you know, it's like if Matthew 24 is about the rapture, you know, just simply comparing the two passages. I actually have this written down somewhere in my uh, notes or whatever. I'm just trying to see if I can find it. But, you know, I actually have like a, like a written down thing so I can just copy and paste it. To say, you know, because I'm not going to just going to type everything out over and over again. I just type it down on a Word document. So when someone asks a question, I'll just copy and paste it. But I wrote down, you know, First Corinthians 15 and First Thessalonians 4. Both mention dead saints being resurrected before the living saints. And then I write there's zero mention of dead saints being resurrected in Matthew 24. First Corinthians 15, 52 and First Thessalonians 4, 16. Both mention the trump of God or God speaking with his voice like a trump. Uh, there's no there's zero mention of this in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 mentions great signs happening before the appearing of Jesus Christ. There's no signs mentioned in uh, by Paul, basically. That's what I've written down. So they're not talking about the same event. 
And the thing is, when you listen to Jesus, well, I call it listening to Jesus' word, you know, you read what Jesus is saying, you've always got to look at the subject that he's speaking about, who he's speaking to, what said before that, what said afterwards, you know, the context. Yeah. The entire Jacob's trouble is so Jewish. Yeah, I mean, it's called, it's, you know, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. And, you know, Daniel 9, 20, 24 says, it's determined upon thy people. Who is thy people? Israel. So it's yeah. very clearly for the Jewish people. He's talking to Daniel, isn't he? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and, and so it, it says, you know, the 70 weeks, you know, paraphrasing, but it says the 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, Israel. It's talking about Israel. It's clearly for the Jewish people. And, and even, even in Matthew 24, you know, Jesus is very clearly speaking the Jews. He's saying, let them be in Judea, verse 16. Verse 20, he talks about keeping the Sabbath day. He's very clearly talking to Jewish people. He's not talking to Christians. Yeah. Have you got a plane ticket to 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 Israel? I don't know where the mountains of Judea are. Have you got your plane ticket sorted out, John? Because I'm, because if that's a rapture, I'm stuck with a plane ticket. It wouldn't let me leave the country. Exactly. You know, I, I just laugh at these Christians who say, oh, we've replaced the Jews. Okay, then move to Israel then. You know, if you're if you're the new Jews now, move to Israel. Like these Stephen Anderson guys, they, like they, don't, they never do that. I mean, it's like, okay, if, if white Christians are now the new Jews, then why don't we all pack our bags and move to Israel? Because that, that's what we're supposed to be doing, apparently. So, you know, ridiculous. Yeah. And I don't think the Jews over there you know, the true sort of Torah believing Jews would be too impressed, really, with a bunch of Christians yeah. going up there and saying, well, we've, we've replaced you, lads, you, you need to go somewhere else. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. Cause considering that the doctrine of replacement theology is, you know, the, the motive behind the Inquisition, the Crusades, and all the Catholic persecution of the Jews, basically. Yeah. And the Catholic so-called church is has always, always hated the Jews. I mean, what do you think they created Islam for? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, Islam, Islam. I mean, there's a, there's a Hamas. You know, you know Hamas, right? That group Hamas. Yeah. That group in Israel and in Palestine. Well, they actually had a music video one time where they said basically killing Jews is worship that draws us close to Allah, or something okay. like, along those lines or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But Islam. I mean, it looks so. I mean, those those uh, imams or whatever they call them, muftis, are always turning up at the Vatican, kissing the Pope's ring in more ways than one. Yeah, you know. <coughs> no, not so. I think it was uh, Pope John Paul. He kissed the Quran back in the nineties. He kissed. He basically yeah. kissed the Quran. I posted that all over the place, John, on 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 Twitter. Yeah, I got sick of Twitter. Exactly. Were just ignoring me or blocking me. I even had one Jesuit slagging me off, if you'll excuse the expression. And like nobody was sort of taking notice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess their Twitter shadow bands you or something. I don't know. That that tween joy that I mentioned to you, where you can tweet longer tweets, that's gone now. They've got rid of it. Yeah. I hammer it with that. I'd load it up with a video. What I've done, tags, pictures, comment, obviously. Yeah. What is my witness? Joe? I mean, you I know, at least twenty thousand tweets over the last eight or nine, ten years. Eight or nine yeah. years. Yeah. It's it's tweeting. kind of funny because. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, exactly. It's, it's also funny too because if you just Google Pope Francis Islam, look what comes up. Like, this is one of the first things that comes up. Pope Francis claims Islam and Christianity are equal in the eyes of God. No. You know? Oh. No. And, and and there he is. He's having this Muslim guy reading a Quran to him or something. You yeah. know? No. The so-called God of Islam is described totally different to the only true God, the almighty God, the immutable God. Theirs is capricious. And I mean, some of the stuff yeah. you read, Quran, I've got that comic. Uh, what's it called now? Um, Converse or else. Uh, oh. 
Oh, I can't remember the name of it. No, yeah. was it wasn't like Muhammad's Muhammad's like believe it or else. I have a PDF of it on my computer somewhere. Yeah. It's like Muhammad's yeah. believe it or else or something. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Excellent. It, I'm sure uh, that would fit any Muslim. Yeah, especially because especially because it's. Especially because it has a picture of Muhammad, which is already a sin already, because Islam forbids you making pictures of Muhammad. Yeah. Yeah. When I used to work in the kitchens at a prison they call Risley, Grizzly Risley they call it, I used to work in the kitchens, and I'd see them on a Friday afternoon coming out of their little made-up mosque type thing. I think they had a room or somewhere. You should have seen him walking out of there with without those white coat things on, like smocks. The head stuck right up in the air, and you could tell, you know, when they looked at you, they thought we were right, the lowest pieces of garbage on this earth. Especially if they find out you're a Christian, you know. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the Quran even the Quran even curses though. It curses those who believe Jesus is the Son of God. So, yeah, yeah. One thing I learned in jail, John, and I do try to stick to it a lot because I know people hate it. Is the truth? The one yeah. Thing, everybody. I mean, sometimes I find some truths uh, unpleasant. Possibly some truths about me, I'm sure. Uh, but truth really triggers people because where does truth ultimately lead if you follow it through properly? Jesus Christ. Exactly, yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, atheists will say, oh, give, give me proof for God. Then you give them proof and they say, well, you know, they, they try to explain it away because, you know, truth leads you to God. So they don't want truth. They want to keep living in a, in a delusion. Basically. Yeah. And it's funny, atheists, no wonder God refers to them as fools. Yeah. People say can't, there is no God. They talk about God more than some Christians do. Yeah, it, it's actually hilarious. For for they, they sure do hate the a being for a being that doesn't exist, supposedly doesn't exist, they sure hate hate him a lot. It's weird. Yeah. And and they sure are obsessed with like attacking him a lot. If he doesn't exist, you know, in their mind, why do they attack him so much? Why are they just obsessed with attacking him so much? Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Reasoning skills much. Yeah. I, I've always held the belief that atheists deep down inside know there is a God. They're just in self-denial. Yeah. That, that's always what in my mind. John, fighting against the truth. Yeah. I because pe people don't become, because people don't become atheists. They're not born atheists. They're always become atheists in their teens or that kind of stuff because they've been fed propaganda. Nobody atheist. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, it's learned behavior in school, John. As soon as they, I believe, I can't remember what sort of. I don't know if they taught evolution when I was a, a nipper, but I think we teach evolution quite a lot in school. And other stuff, other ungodly stuff. Yeah. What sort of things did they teach you? Anything like that at school, John? Like, like. Uh, well, it's like a lot of like secular humanism type of stuff, you know. Um, uh, like one time, I, I came out and said, you know, my opinion is that I, I'm against, and, and this is back when I was a false convert. And anyway, even when I was like, you know, saying, hey, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. I'm against, you know, sodomite marriage, and I was like shunned for that. I was saying, oh, you can't say that. That's you know bad and whatever. And then they had this gay pride thing in the cafeteria, and I wanted to come out and I wanted to say, "Hey, can I wear a straight, a, like a heterosexual pride T-shirt?" And I was banned from doing so from wearing a straight pride T-shirt. But they can have gay pride stuff going on going around. Yeah. 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 So also, back to the thing, back to back to the thing on Islam. I have a whole bunch of photos on my on my uh, laptop of. The Pope basically yoking up with Islam. So, yeah, Islam yeah. is definitely Roman Catholic. And I've seen the way they punish these women in Islam, these Muslim women. Okay, they, they committed yeah. adultery. Obviously, they shouldn't have done and whatever. But they bury them in a pit and they start throwing stones at them. And, you know, 
that's no way to deal with an adulteress. Yeah. I, especially not in the New Testament, too. Oh, no. No. I want to get on Facebook. I mean, obviously, obviously adultery... Obviously, adultery is wrong. I mean, obviously, adultery is wicked and wrong. But yeah. you know, in the, under the New Testament, you know, you don't kill them under the, under the New, you basically witness to them. But you know, in Islam, Islam basically has has their own you know basically their own version of the Mosaic Law. So they basically think we're under the law essentially. Yeah. So how are things where you are, John? You all right? Are you? Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you working later then? Um, well, I'm, I'm home from work because I um, I there's like a list that are supposedly COVID symptoms that if I have those I can't show up, so I oh, have wow. those today. It's like you know, it, it's like one of them's a headache, one of them's muscle ache. So it's like if I, if I have a headache, I, I can't show up basically. Yeah. Oh. You know, I mean, it's like it's just a headache. Yeah. The paranoid, that's what they're just creating fear, aren't they? That's all the paranoia. Doing. Yeah, it's paranoia. You know, and, and another problem too, because that over here in Canada, it's like getting into cold and flu season. So people will start having the flu, and it would be hard because suppose, supposedly the coronavirus is just another version of the flu, essentially. So people are going to have the flu. So it's really hard to tell who has, you know, coronavirus if, you know, if this thing even exists. Hard who who will have coronavirus and who just has the flu, basically. Are, are we gonna like quarantine people who have the flu as well? Yeah. <coughs> Those two videos that you've mentioned earlier, John. Was it uh, Denlinger videos? Um. Are you gonna, are you gonna put them which, up on each? Which ones? What the one about uh, five reasons why Brian's a cult leader or something? Uh, you mentioned two. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Uh, I can't. I I have ADHD, so I can't remember that well either. Yeah. Yeah, but I did, I did a video called uh, Five Reasons Why Brian Dunlinger is a Cult Leader," and I just showed from their own words, from their own videos, that they 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 do behave like cults, basically. Yeah. Well, it's been. I would say that has become more obvious in the last, uh, more obvious. Yeah. In the last, uh, I would say two, possibly three months or so, especially since, uh, and I think you'd probably agree, since Tim got booted, then Brian, yeah. and then last day's Maze. Yeah. Yeah. People are seeing that, you know, in this group, it's like if you disagree with Brian, then you're lost. You're a heretic. I mean, I've I've obviously experienced that now. So people are. Yeah. I mean, I, from what I understand, when Jeremy left the Brian cult, it wasn't just him that left. There were like, from according to Jeremy, there were like 15 other people that left Brian's group along with Jeremy, basically, because they could see what Brian was, was, was really like. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and it does. It does. It does say something about the fact that most of the people that attack Brian are former like followers of Brian who now attack him. You know that should say something. It, it's not Brian tries to say, well, they thought I was great, and now you know, like the Apostle Paul, they stab me in the back. No, it's because they see you're a cult leader and they're exposing him now, basically. Tim could have said a lot more than he has done. Yeah, I know he could have. I mean, you know. I mean, looking back now, I mean, I, I, you know, what the heck was that? Oh, some car was speeding by or whatever. Um, I know it's the wind. <laughs> I thought it was a car. It was a like big wind going by. Um, I think it's supposed to thunderstorm sometime today. So, but, um, yeah, but so, I mean, Tim, he, he brought out a lot of good points on Brian in his two videos or three videos and just showed that Brian was just lying and covering up sin and everything like that. Um, yeah, you know? I'm I'm surprised though, John, because I know that most of the people that used to come in the live stream with me, well, that we've come together, you know, I'm surprised that, that they aren't sort of beginning to see these problems and stuff, because none of them ever said anything regarding that to you. Yeah. You know? 
and, you know, I've got, and I've got an email from people. I got an email from, email from somebody telling me that, you know, uh, they still watch Brian, but they also support me too. Cause you know, they, they've seen what I, what my videos on Brian and, the, and you know, they see, yeah, I'm right. You know, Brian is behaving very cultic and you know, there's and like I've gotten a lot of emails from people telling me that they actually support me and you know they actually are with me and, and you know they they they're also like leaving Brian's group too so yeah um I I, I guarantee you, you know, I guarantee you like they're gonna like if they if they find out about that they're gonna say we'll see drawing disciples away after himself no it's just people who see what Brian Brian's really like because of my videos and they leave you know it's not me drawing away disciples after myself. I'll never ask you who's emailed you, John. I won't do that. That's okay. Wanna, I mean, I just, go ahead. I do repeat what I said this morning to you. Uh, that that YouTube channel that came up, uh, oh, what's it called now? That video. I know it's gone now. Um, I had absolutely nothing to do with that, John. I can prove that. As I said to you, I'll give you the logins to all of my email addresses with the number the, the, the password thing so that you can so, sorry sorry to, sorry, to inter sorry to interrupt but it, i'm looking right now it's so windy there's like recycling flying everywhere because it's so windy yeah i, I live i live in a yeah, complex and there's just recycling fl all over the all over the all all over the uh driveways now because it's it's just uh it's just so windy yeah all oh, the ruby Mm -hmm. that, well, I mean, just look at the mess. That's gonna be fun to clean up. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if my bins have actually. I don't think my I don't think my bins have been affected because they're not like in the wind area. They're kind of protected, so they probably won't be affected. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I didn't have anything to do with that. You, yeah. You can't, you know. Uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I thought it would maybe just maybe just you know having some fun or whatever. So, but I, now I believe it could maybe have just been Aaron Deering or one of his little drones, maybe just pretend to hide behind a channel. It, I mean, it wouldn't put me put me past them. Put it put it. Yeah, it wouldn't put. I wouldn't put it past them to do that because, you know, you know, because I've seen what they really like, so I, I it wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them to do that. Yeah. Well, is that showing up? What is? Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I took yeah. screenshots of the whole thing and everything, and uh, yeah, it, it's kind of funny because once once we kind of revealed that you know we're onto the guy's channel, whoever it is, he um, deleted the video. I guess damage control or whatever. Well, I believe I can prove that it's nothing to do with me, John, because. As I say, I, I, well, you know, we discussed it this morning. But the phrase in there, I see you, that reminds me of something. What does it remind you of? Hey? What, what does it remind you of? Well, it's the name of a video that Accountable KJV did. Can you see that word oh. there at the bottom of his icon? Oh, yeah, I see that. I see you. Yeah. So I don't know if he's that vindictive to be honest. I don't know if he's likely to do anything like that. I don't know. Uh, I, I mean know. personally, accountable KJV, he seems kinda of like a nice guy. Um yeah. the reason why I said that, the reason the reason why I said it could have been Aaron or Alexander Hartley, because those two guys are just very bitter and abrasive. So I, I would have suspected that's why I originally suspected it could have been one of those two. Yeah, yeah. I can't see it being Alexander. Oh, I don't know. Do you know what Alexander Hartley is? That I, I, he definitely has has a lot of pride issues because, you know, back in June I had that you know back and forth thing with him, and he basically thinks because he's he's an older guy he can't be rebuked or anything like that. He says he's an elder, but yet he's not even in ministry. So he's not really an elder if he's not in ministry. But, um, but he he basically uh, thinks, he thinks that making videos qualifies him for ministry. Yeah. It's usually pretty obvious when I create a spoof channel because the title uh, sort of gives it away, really. Yeah. I give him a word, John. I have done no such thing, and it will never happen again. I told you. 
regardless of what you do, you know, I'm never going to do another video on you. And if I've still got any on my channel, they'll be gone. I've deleted oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I, I I wasn't like offended. I just simply thought, oh, maybe maybe you're you know having some fun trolling or whatever, um, you know. But <laughs> sorry if it came off. Sorry, sorry if it came off the wrong way. No, it's all no, John. I couldn't blame you. I have commented on your channel weeks ago, over the last six seven months. I really, I mean, some yeah. of the comments I made were. were I believe we're quite polite. I said, look, John, you know, you've seen this and you heard him say this on the NIFB thing. Can't you yeah. see it, John? You know, I'll just sort of leave it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. No, it's okay, John. <laughs> I couldn't blame you. Couldn't blame you. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, you know... Um... Because you know, like like you know, darn it, lost my lost my train of thought. <laughs> Great. You was gonna mention you mentioned Brian there. Well, I um, I forgot what I was darn. I forgot what I was gonna say. I certainly would never have brought somebody's family into it, John, like that guy did. Whoever Who that did? Was. In in. Uh, oh yeah, 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 bring, yeah. Bringing my family into that, yeah. You know, it's just the guy. The guy's got some issues. Yeah, no way I would do that anyway. Yeah, I, I block. I blocked the channel because he would. He was just yeah. spamming comments on every video. So I was like, yeah, because I I would delete his comments, and he would just a few seconds later another you know, like, comment pop. I seen videos, so I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna block this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I blocked him. Yeah, the trouble is, he can open out another channel, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So, I can't remember what else was said in that video. I've just uh, played, premiered, or whatever they call it. He's upsetting a lot yeah. of people, John. I haven't realised how many different people are being called out, so-called, as being Jesuit. There's this other guy on there. Uh, what's he called now? The Church Lives Loud or something or other. No, not him. That, that, that's, uh... Oh, I can't remember now. The High Church Ang Anglican guy been... or something? Oh, no, not him, no. Uh, I'll remember later. But I mean, there's quite a few people have been called out as being supposedly Jesuit. Yeah. I mean, you know, people who've who like have exposed the Jesuits for years are now Jesuits because because Brian said so or or Deeran said so or something, you know. It blocks any necessity for conversation, discussion, correction, repentance even, you know, or forgiveness. Because the excuse will get rolled out. Oh, he's a Jesuit. Oh, ooh. Yeah. So, sorry about that. I Yeah, there's some people with some mad sounding bikes and where are they? Uh. <sighs> huh. So apparently um uh I just looked at this right now. Apparently two ISIS uh members have been indicted on US char in US on charges linked to beheading of American hostages, apparently. Yes, yeah. You know, the thing about ISIS, though, I, I believe that ISIS... Oh. What's this? ISIS is oh. started by the Jesuit I, CIA. Exactly, yeah. I've always said that ISIS is a creation of the, of the Jesuits, you know? Yeah. Well, the, the, obviously, the Jesuits used um, 
proxies. I mean, we use the CIA to create ISIS. Uh, yeah. Afghan, um, Al Qaeda. But this guy yeah. who chatted with John, it's obviously the same guy because he's got the same icon thingy. Yeah. You need to give over. Uh, oh, well, it's up to you what you do with your channel. I mean, I mean, he's wow. talking to you and he's turned up. Yeah. So, you want me to block? I'll just block him, shall I? Yeah, you can just block him, yeah. He, he, you know, he's just, he's just going to be like, you know, I don't know who, I mean, like whoever, whoever you are behind that channel, you know, just get a life, you know, just get a life. Yeah. And, and, and stop calling everyone Jesuits that you don't agree with, you know? Yeah. See, one of the main reasons I'd create these spoof channels is because I kept getting blocked on, on the other channels. I know that you, you're aware of which ones. I thought, well, I just want to yeah. make sure that you know that I'm still alive, breathing and kicking. And I just wanted to point out there. I mean, if I thought about it just for 10 minutes or so longer back then, in, was it January or February? I would have just ignored the whole thing, everything that we're doing. hidden all mm. the uh, stream videos and just carried on doing the other stuff I wanted to do. Just let them crack on with it. Because they are tearing each other apart, John. And that's not my case. Yeah. Exactly, but yeah. You know that because I've said certain things, perhaps they might, I mean, I doubt it, but they'd be discussing it. It would be, no, I don't believe that. But they're tearing each other apart amongst themselves in there, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I mean, the, the cult is falling apart. All cults, they fall apart at one point. I mean, because when somebody, when somebody like a big person leaves the cult, because when Tim left the cult, it wasn't just Tim. It was like like other people in the comments were supporting him. So there are obviously there are other people that left the cult too. When someone like leaves the cult, other, other people leave the cult too because they see, you know, what, what it's really like at the cult. Well, there was three of them in one week. Brian Harlow. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to keep going on about this, John. But Brian Denley was actually subscribed to Brian Harlow's channel. I've got a screencast of that. And then I've got a screencast of it when Brian unsubscribed from him. He treat that young bad young lad badly. And Tim. All three in one go just about. So, yeah, and Jeremy. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I watched Jeremy Carter's stream on uh, Brian. He made the points. I mean, Brian's just arrogant and won't take correction from anybody. He just refuses to admit to being wrong. So he just casts out Tim, Brian, Harlow as lost, or or you know, he lumps them in with you know people who make lots of videos on Brian. You know, all that stuff. Has Brian still got that video of, of when they would? sort of trying to tear Jeremy apart on that stream with, with Tim last day's maze. He was in that. Yeah, I still have that. It was called a public rebuke. I still have it. They, he still has it on his channel. And I also have it downloaded too. And it's also been uploaded on other channels as well. So, you know, oh, even okay. if Brian does take it down, still, even if Brian does take it down, there's still copies of it online. Yeah. Somebody will have it copied, won't they? Yeah, and even even if the copy, even if the other channels take it down, I still have it downloaded on my computer and saved to my drive and Google Photos. So even even if I delete it off my computer, I still have it saved in other places. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna head out now. I'm just gonna you know take a get a lunch, get some lunch or whatever. But what was that? I asked if you wanted to stream, but anytime you want to stream, John, uh, sure. let me know. I'll be up and All running right. in five minutes. All right. Cool. All right. See you later. Okay, John. Goodbye. Go and get to eat. All right.
but I can assure you, John, you know, just before you go, I don't know if you're still listening, um, I won't be doing any more spoof channels. I can't be bothered. It's too much mucking about, really. Yeah, it's just a waste of time. You just block you and that's it. Then you have to go and do another one or whatever. Anyway, I'm closing now. I can see two people watching. If you want to come in, comment. You can do. Uh, I'm going in a minute or so. God bless you, John, and anybody who's listening. Right. Unless you make a comment, I'm going. In about four times it now. I'm going, it's 1836 here, so I'm going to go 1840 in about four minutes. You're there, Bailey. The way they talk to some of the women that come on my channel, female Christians. You need to be here. Right. I'm going... Three minutes. As long as you're polite, I don't mind talking to anybody. I don't care too much. But if you're going to be a pain in the neck, I don't need it really, to be honest with you. It's not like you enjoy arguing with people. You people, you know, some of you think you can justify yourselves lying about people, making false accusations. That's up to you. Bear in mind though that uh, the God of Heaven knows exactly what's going on He knows precisely what's going on Christians have to be careful, you know, how they treat other Christians, and I know I'm guilty of being misbehaving that way, but I'm not going to excuse it. I could explain it, I think. But we do have to be careful how we treat Christian brothers and sisters. You can't just treat, treat them like rubbish. Just over one minute and I'm going. I'm going to come in and chat in more than I'm premiering some more videos soon.
How on earth you can call John a Jesuit? I mean, that's so stupid. Foolish. Right, 18.40 it is, I'm going, I'm going in about 10 seconds and then, I'm not trying to force it to come in and chat, I mean, you know, come on in. Right, that's it, I'm done. 